next we're going to look at a very uh, more specific application of similar figures uh, called scale drawings and scale models. This is something you'll see uh, quite often uh, in your future lives as homeowners, I'm sure, as you, uh, you work with blueprints or you work with models or whatever. Um, so basically what this boils down to, uh, just to get some definitions here, you see them on your note sheet. I have a couple of things I want you to highlight though. Uh, scale drawing is a representation of an object in real life. Notice uh, the, the key word here is the word similar. Uh, the scale drawing is mathematically similar to the object. Uh, that word similar should mean to you similar figures. So in other words, we perform a dilation, we have a scale factor here, we multiply the real life object by that dilation, we get this new object that's a scale model of the, uh, the, the old object. So as an example, think of a map. Uh, your map could be representing something that is 50 miles long or even thousands of miles long. But the map itself, take a map of the United States, could fit uh, in, in the palm of your hand. Um, so it's a representation, though, of the, what actually is the United States or a map of whatever you're looking at. Um, to get from that large, large object down to the smaller object, or if you think of a, another example, take like a, a statue of something. Um, if you think about the, the statue of Roberto Clemente down at PNC Park, they took an actual uh, image of Roberto Clemente at the actual size, and they made it much, much bigger. Um, so you have, uh, you have this much, much bigger object. So they dilated it by using a scale factor bigger than one uh, to make this... Uh, to make this similar figure that is a scale model of the smaller actual Roberto Clemente. Uh, to use that we use, uh, you've heard scale, uh, scale factor. Scale is something new we're going to use here. It's, it's similar but slightly different. Notice that it's a ratio. Notice what we're comparing here. Drawing to the actual object. So it's a comparison of drawing to the real object. So uh, let's get a formula here. There is an actual formula for this. To calculate scale, and it's something we're going to use again and again. Uh, for to do the scale, just remember to always put uh, the drawing or the model's dimensions over the real life dimension. Think about this: the drawing. If you put a map, that's the new object, right? The old object is what you started with. So remember, with scale factor, we did new over old. Same thing here, except the new thing, the thing we're making, the model or the drawing, is a representation of that real life thing. Okay? All right. So let's take a look at uh, an example of how we find the scale. So if I have here a couple of things to highlight, just to kind of uh, highlighting and boxing things is going to really help you here, underlining. So I have a real life object, okay, that I make a scale drawing of. And it says the drawing is two centimeters. The actual length is eight meters. Now remember what we just wrote. Scale is drawing over real life. That's your ratio. So the drawing here is two centimeters. So I'll put that on top. And it's two centimeters to eight meters. And then all I have to do, I'm not going to do anything with the labels. Uh, scale has labels. Scale factor does not. That's one thing we're going to take a look at tomorrow. Scale factor, or the scale here says for every centimeter, I have four meters in real life. So every centimeter on my drawing represents four meters on real, in real life. That's what a scale does. It tells you what distance on the drawing represents the other distance in real life. Uh, just a couple other terms to be familiar with here. A scale drawing that is smaller than the actual object. So think like maps, blueprints, whatever. This is called a reduction. Maps and blueprints are examples of reductions. Scale drawing that is larger than the original object is an enlargement, makes it bigger. Um, that would be like a statue or, or something like that. Um, or like under, looking under a microscope. That makes your actual object look bigger. Um, so let's talk about the learning target here. How do we find missing dimensions? There were two ways we did this with similar figures, and these are similar figures, so we can use the two ways again. One is to multiply by the scale factor. And we'll look a little bit more at that one tomorrow. The second one is that since these are similar figures, the ratios of their side lengths, or the ratio of their dimensions, are proportional. They're equal to each other. So you're going to set up two equal ratios 
one with uh, what you got to remember the thing that's nice about this is that uh, the scale actually is a ratio so if we have to set two ratios equal to each other I know the scale tells me how the drawing relates to the real life then if I have any other information about either the drawing or the actual object I can set up a full proportion uh, to figure this out so to take a look at the first example here a couple things to highlight first of all the drawing is one and a half inches and my scale is one inch to six feet very important to figure out uh, what we're actually solving for because in algebra we're gonna call that X so when it says who what when where, why how that's gonna be your clue so X here is the actual length of the object so X is the actual length and I'm gonna go about setting up my proportion first ratio is one inch to six feet halfway done it's that easy now all I have to figure out is where does X go it's the actual length well remember we said drawing always goes over actual. That's always the way we do the comparison here because drawing is the new thing. Uh, the actual is the old thing that we made the drawing from. So one and a half inches was the drawing. X was the actual length. Now that I have my proportion, all I have to do is cross multiply. So one times X equals six times 1.5. So X equals nine. Now look for your units here. Notice it's inches to feet. So feet are going to be on bottom. Um, just a word on multiplying by the scale factor here. Notice that one my scale factor here is not one sixth. It's one inch to six feet. The problem here is that six feet is 72 inches, right? So actually this is not one sixth, it's one seventy second, which is a lot smaller than one sixth, right? So what that would mean is that the new object is 1 72nd as big as the old object. So you can't just take the straight fraction when you're dealing with the scale and multiply by that. With the scale, you have to set up the proportion or you have to convert the scale to a scale factor. We're going to learn about that tomorrow in class. Let's take a look at uh, a, a couple more examples here just to talk about how to set this up. So first of all, let's figure out what we're solving for. Again, what that's going to tell us x. x is the actual length. Then we're going to look for our scale, and we're going to look for the other piece of information that they give us. The scale is 1,000 to 1. Then uh, it appears, the amoeba appears to be 8 millimeters. Notice that doesn't say it's actually 8 millimeters. 8 millimeters would be pretty big for an amoeba. Um, it doesn't, so it's not actually that length. Um, that is uh, kind of like a model of the amoeba. It's a representation of the amoeba. So that's going to be what goes on top. So with my uh, proportion here, I'm going to put 1,000 to 1 as my first ratio, just because that's what's given to me. I'm going to use it. And then 8 millimeters will go on the top. Your other clue here is that x is the actual length. That's what we need to find. So if that goes on the bottom anyway, 8 millimeters, is just, that's the only place left to put it in the top. So 1,000 times x equals 8. Divide both sides by a thousand, and we're going to end up with uh, eight one thousandths or 0 .008. Look for your labels. Notice the only labels here are millimeters, so I have to use millimeters. All right, next one. What I'm solving for here is the actual height of the person. So if you, let's write this down. It helps if you write it down because that will remind you where to put it. So x is the actual height. That tells me right away, x is going to go on the bottom of my proportion, or the bottom of my second ratio. My first ratio is going to be 1 to 16. And notice that the person on the drawing is 4 and a half inches. The actual person, if the actual person were 4 and a half inches, they probably wouldn't be alive. So uh, let's take our first ratio, 1 to 16, equals uh, the drawing's dimensions are 4 and a half. So that's going to go on top. x is going to go on bottom because that's the actual height. And then we're going to cross multiply. 1 times x equals 16 times 4.5. We'll pull a calculator out for that 16 times 4.5. And that equals 72. Now, again, inches are the only thing there, so it's 72 inches. That would make sense for a human being. That's about 6 feet. So that's about right there. All right, next. Uh, we're looking for the height of the model. So x is the height of the model. That's going to go on top. The scale I'm given is 3 inches to 2 feet. So let's go ahead and uh, write down what x means. 
and then let's write three inches to two feet. This next part's a little tricky. It doesn't say the model is 32 feet. It says the model of a 32-foot house. So uh, we don't know what the model is. Well, we know we were making the model of an actual 32-foot house. So 32 feet is the actual size. That's going to go on bottom. So 3 inches to 2 feet equals x over 32. Notice that another clue is that we're going to keep uh, feet lined up with the feet, although that doesn't always work. But here it does. So we have 2 times x equals 32 times 3. 2x equals 32 times 3 is 96. Divide both sides by 2. And x equals 30, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 48 inches. Notice the top is inches, so uh, x is in the top, so that's going to be in inches as well. All right, last example. Here we go. Same situation here. We're looking for the height of the model. So let's go ahead and write down uh, x, what x stands for. It's going to be the exact same thing as the last problem. So x is going to go on the bottom because it's always, uh, I'm sorry, x is going to go on the top. This is always the model's dimensions or the drawing's dimensions over the actual dimensions. Same situation here. We have a scale of four inches to two feet. So the, the, uh, the, scales, the scale's different here. Uh, the, the phrasing is the same, though. It's not, it's not a 24-foot model. That would be a pretty big model. It's the model of the actual bridge. So my first ratio is four inches to two feet, and then 24 feet. It's going to go on uh, bottom. X is going to go on top. This gets pretty easy to, to set these proportions up because half the proportion is done for you. Just take your ratio and write that as your first one, your, your scale, write that as your first ratio. Then all you have to figure out, does X go on top or bottom? Does 24 go on top or bottom? And then cross multiplying, you should be able to do that in your sleep. It's just doing a little bit of algebra. Again, X equals 48 inches. You have a couple problems in your book. Tomorrow we'll explore how scale factors work with this because they certainly do. These are similar figures. They are dilated. How do you do dilations? You multiply by a scale factor. So there has to be a scale factor here. Um, but for tonight, we're just gonna uh, we're gonna make sure we're good at um, finding missing dimensions and finding the scale.